Hey, let's go, let's go. Welcome all to the Master Liang Show. What a ah, Alibaba gonna do the China IPO. Wow, so steady already. I hope the worst is over. I, I did the pool, so feel free to give me your input. Anigoro, US market now will be hotter to cover. So last night I received comments for people uh, write comment on my video that he sold off all his uh, Alibaba shares. Took uh I think fifteen percent cut loss. Then I just reply him a uh, good game. Then today he deleted the comment already. Otherwise, I will screenshot it. But but not to make fun of anyone. Uh, I think a lot of uh Baba Bird is very fearful. I worry your paper hand. But there's nothing wrong if you want to paper hand and sell out of Alibaba and SE. That's why I want to talk about Sing Song today. Like something that is very solid, very defensive. So that you can actually reallocate your portfolio if uh, needed. Bao Chang Lin, Cai Niang IPO is coming. Yeah, that's why. Hey, I see today Hong Kong market bubble up. I also never see any news. So I decided to cover Sing Song today. Then after the market closed, then I see wow, the Bloomberg report. Cai Niang IPO. Wow, then I know what, what already. Wow, so I'll give you all the details later. Yeah, so Ani Goro. I never sold Baba for what sell low already. Yeah, now it's to buy. Keep it as a hedge in case war. War and China win. Uh. Wow. China is such a superpower. SE and Baba start engine. I think SE was up uh, 3% pre market. Last night, I don't know why it was down 5%. There's no news on SE. Uh, Tuck Wing Lock Talk. Uh, uh, Tuck Wing. Uh, so. This one considered rocket, 4% missile. Yeah, small, mini rocket, mini rocket. Yeah. So, is it a good time to IPO given it's so weak? So, we must look at the valuations. Like, Fresh Hippo, the valuations was on the low side, 4 5 billion. So, they decided to postpone it. Uh. They wanted uh, 10 billion. So, I'll talk about the China, what valuations to expect. Vivian Ng, got IPO better than no IPO since Baba in ICU mode. Beggars cannot be cho choosers. Uh, yeah, IPO is to unlock value. So the question is whether we unlock value or not. Uh, JH, Cisco acquiring cyber security firm Splug for 157. Yeah, last night it was up like 20%, all cash deal. So I w w read on the worship read Reddit. Got people all in a call option on the Splug and made like 48,000% returns. Instantly, I think 10K become a few million dollars. So that one is, is gambling one. Uh. Maybe the person got insider news. Uh. That's why we're all in the Splunk. Yeah. I, I'm not familiar, uh, but, but it's a cybersecurity firm. I don't see it as a tech company. Uh. Cybersecurity is so, so, so common. Yeah. JH, the acquisition is so far by Cisco's largest uh, ever into security. I think security, too many people doing. Uh. I think oversaturated. Vivian uh, cheated by Papa too many times. The, the boat always come back. Shun Chai, all in Sing Song. Yeah. Is this a good deal for Cisco? I don't think so. Lah. Usually they, they buy on, on the high side. Yep, CH. Good evening, good evening. Oh, okay. Uh, Niva. Oh, welcome, welcome. Okay, I skip some comments. Daisy Investor. Yeah, yesterday FOMC. The past two nights, uh, US down and down. So to, tonight should be a bit of rebound. Lah. Oversold already. So oh, Ivy Lim, to, I think today is green day. Everything overextended. Bolingo Bank, oh ah, Ivy Lim, oh technique TA experts yeah, oh ah, can share with us your your, your TA. So Fred Maggie, good good morning. Lazy investor Fed seems sitting on the fence ah, but expectation is one more hike, so be careful. Yeah, futures green ah, so today maybe a, a small rebound back, but for Baba it's a big rebound ah, up four percent. Anantas, welcome welcome. George Clee, welcome. Ivy Lim, SE held AGM today. Oh, I didn't, I don't know. Oh, the AGM is at where Singapore. Actually, I, I, I yeah, but oh yeah, oh, my, my, my shares with custodian. Oh. I can go lah, but apply the custodian, very troublesome lah. Oh, yeah. what's this? The indirect one. Yeah, must get the letter. All this. Ben S S E. Uh, Baba is swing swing boat. Boat come back to port now. Now leave boat already. Yeah. Okay. SE Maui Bank increased interest for saving. Yeah, now they're competing against the uh, GSX. They, their interest slightly a bit higher. G 
GSX is like 2.8. Mari Bank rose their rate to 3.28. Then Mari Bank can put, you know, they give you the interest is daily one. It's compounded daily. Yeah, so so you every day you get a few dollars. It, it's quite short uh, in, in that sense. Yeah, so let me start. Let me begin. Alibaba, China IPO. Yeah, yeah. And they want to raise at least $1 billion. So $1 billion, is it a lot or is it very little? So we, we thought it would be uh, the other units uh, to, to IPO first. In the end, it's the, the logistic. Boss, the car business, the groceries delivery business. In the end, it's the logistic. So th this is very positive news. Uh, because why are they doing all this IPO to unlock value? Because Alibaba, the market cap now $200 billion. But the Taobao and Tmao is generating 25 billion of free cash flow every year. All the other businesses is not being valued by the market. So I rather they just IPO and give us the shares. So uh Chai Niao, right? Plans to found is Hong Kong. So Hong Kong market uh, IPO as soon as next week. So very good. Next week, once it found, they have to submit the prospectus. So I'll digest the prospectus and give you all a deep dive on the Chai Niao logistics. You can look back on my previous video. I, I did a, a deep dive on the Chai Niao logistics 2022 before. But I, I use a Chinese research report la, to, 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 I use it, then I just translate to you all. So it's copy and paste, la, more like a trans, translation one. La. So I hope that the prospectors one, I can give you even more details and, and a deeper dive. So they are targeting to raise 1 billion, but they don't know what is the valuations. So later I'll give you all what is the rough estimates. For them, right, their objective is not to get as much cash as profitable. Why? Because China Logistics has already turned profitable. They are not burning money to capture market share. They are already profitable. And in fact, they are seeing 30 to 40% very high growth rate. So like I mentioned in China, right, the three big logistic network uh, is Sun Feng, is listed in Hong Kong, JD Logistics, also listed in Hong Kong. And lastly, Cai Niao. Cai Niao is actually all the smaller players, they bunch together to use their network, like ZTO, YTO, ZTO, STO. All, all these are all the logistic players. And all these logistic players, the smaller one, they are also listed uh, in the US market also. So for Cai Niao, right, they're actually the top 10 global unicorn. And if you don't know, the number one biggest unicorn, so a unicorn is a company that is privately listed. You cannot trade the shares in the exchange. It has more than $1 billion in market cap. The biggest unicorn is ByteDance. The second biggest unicorn is SpaceX. The third largest unicorn is Alicab. Uh, the fourth largest uh, unicorn is uh, Ang Group. Uh, so, uh, Cai Niao, if I'm not mistaken, is number six. Uh, it's number six or number seven. Largest unicorn. So you notice that of all the biggest unicorn in the world, the top 10 unicorn, Alibaba has three unicorn under its portfolio. So uh, that that's amazing. Uh, we have the Cai Niao, we have Alicab, we have Angu. That, if all three of them IPO, right, <laughs> the valuation could be worth as much as like Taobao Tianmao, as much as the market cap we, we see today. So hopefully, uh, they can IPO in the coming two years. Uh. So what? how to unlock value? The IPO, then they give us the shares. Because the market now only value Alibaba for Taobao and Tianmao. The IPO, they give us the shares, then we decide. Do you want to hold our Alicloud and group or China shares? Or do you want to sell it at the market price to get cash? So don't worry if you're holding Baba in the US market. If you're holding Baba in the US market, it depends on your broker. If your broker is a US market only broker, right? What they will do is that once they get the Hong Kong shares or Thai Niao, they will sell it for you and they give you cash dividend. If your broker supports Hong Kong market, example, you, you are like me in Singapore, you're using Tiger, Weibo, Mumu, all of these brokers support Hong Kong market, then they'll give you the Hong Kong shares. But if you hold in the Hong Kong market, then of course you still also, definitely you will get the Hong Kong shares. But most likely, la, uh, N Group, Alicloud, Thai Niao, they'll all be listed in the Hong Kong market due to the fear of delisting risk. But so far, like we saw the audit, the PBAOC, uh, PCAOB is all uh, have been going smoothly. Now, no hiccups. Alibaba remains listed in the US market. But the fear is that the trade tension between US and China might escalate. So it's better. 
safer to list uh, in the Hong Kong market. So the big question is, if they're going to list at very low valuations, then it's stupid. So, uh, as, so basically, in the IPO, we as a shareholder, we are selling our shares. Because you IPO, you get in new investors, you print additional shares, so it's a dilution. But if you sell at a high valuation, it's good for you. But if you sell at low valuation, it's uh, bad for us. So Cai Niao, right, uh, when it is under the, the Hu Wan report uh, earlier this year. So I think this report was in uh, March or uh, it was in April. It's here, April 25th. Or it was valued uh, at 27 billion. Or this is a 8 billion increase from the pre-pandemic valuation. So over the past three years, it gained about 8 billion. So the past three years, what happened? We saw the chain supply going to a halt due to the lockdowns. Then we saw that during lockdown, what people do? They don't go to the shopping mall. They buy online. And online e-commerce players like ByteDance and Kuaiso seize the opportunities. They go live streaming. They go the TikTok shop. They also go into e-commerce. So one of the competitive advantage that Alibaba and JD has is that they have their own logistic network that covers the entire China. Only three players, the three Sun Feng, JD Logistics and Alibaba can cover the entire China. Kuai So and the Douyin, they do not go into logistics because it's very capital intensive and it's very time consuming. You need at least four to five years to build warehouses or, and to build a network to cover the entire China. And it makes no sense to build a fourth network. So while you see that JD revenues only grow 5%, but you see the logistic business revenues up 30 to 40%. Why? In the past, networks like JD Logistics and China, almost 80% of their revenues come from their own self, which is from Taobao and from the Jingdong. But now, right, times have changed. Only 50% of their business come from their own. The other half comes from third party. So even the Douyin, even the Kuaiso, they don't have their own logistic network. They have to use Cai Niao. They have used JD. So that's why logistics is very fast growing. And for them, right, they want to expand into Asia. That's why they need to raise capital, get the capital to expand more aggressively. So you can see Cai Niao not only going into Asia, they're also going into Africa, Latin America, and Europe. So it's becoming a global logistic player. So for them, right, Cai Niao, right, if you look at their fourth quarter revenue, they made about 2.4 billion of revenue. We annualize it, that's about 10 billion of revenues. Also, uh, based on Bloomberg sources, uh, also based on those analysts, uh, economists, they are saying that Cai Niao is currently valued privately because although they are not listed, so the, those uh, venture funds, those investment firms, they can exchange their shares privately. privately. So there is a private market, usually through the investment banks like Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, or even Citic, or which is the Ch Chinese investment bank. La. So it's valued at over 20 billion. So the, the valuation, the range could be 20 billion to 27 billion. So it think of it as a layman terms. Also, if they're making 10 billion or in 2022 full year revenues, so at a 20 billion valuation, that means it's priced at two times sales. Two times sales, is it expensive? I think it's actually very conservative already. Two, two times sales for a 20 to 30% grower. It's considered high growth tech. La. What? Logistics is, is actually a tech company. You go and look at those videos you see on YouTube, like the Cai Niao and the JD Logistics. The whole warehouse, right, is all robotics, right? Or is those robot moving and shipping and sorting everything? No human. Human is do the last mile delivery. Even when the long haul, the, the trucks need, need to do a two to three hour ride from one city to another city, it's even use the level four FSD. The driver is there, but the driver can sleep for two, three hours. Only when he enter the city, because at the expressway all the way straight, two, three hours is the, the FSD, level four FSD. Once he reach the city, go through the small road, then is the driver take over. So less and less human already in, in the logistic network. So it is a tech company. Uh, it's very heavy on technology. So when you do like uh, logistics, right? Like your parcel, there's so much details. Uh, what is the product? Where is it from? And where is it to be sent to? 
how you gonna sort all the goods, all the data. So, Cai Niao is basically the brain. It's actually very asset like. It's the brain. Then all these companies that tap into the network are, are the arms and the legs. That's how we think about it. So in two zero two three, uh, the logistic business saw a boom. Or due to the reopening, sales is very good, and every all these e-commerce players, be it like uh, uh, Tencent through the WeChat videos, quite so autoing, they use this logistic network. That's why revenues are up thirty to forty percent. So we take it conservatively, la. Thirty percent growth. So uh, revenues from ten billion, it grow thirty percent. Uh, so so. So what's the valuation? Uh, my my math is wrong already. It should be tw two, 26 billion, not 24. 24 billion is 20% growth rate. So 20% growth rate, so we are looking at 24 billion. 30% growth rate, we are looking at 26 billion. So I think 20 to 26 billion range is reasonable. It's about uh, two times sales. So they will be raising at least 1 billion. Uh, so they are, so if, if at a 20 billion, uh, valuation they raise 1 billion that means they are selling 5% of their outstanding shares I think they will sell about 10% of their outstanding shares that we look at the recent IPO arm IPO they sold 10% of their outstanding shares uh, instant cut IPO they sold 8% of their outstanding shares so if their valuation is about 20 to let's say 25 billion they're gonna sell 10% shares I think they'll be raising 2 to 2.5 billion that's my estimates but uh, that, for me, I'm not a professional analyst. Uh, but I give you all the numbers. I give you my view. It should be around there. Uh, it won't be very far. So next week, once uh, they confirm the IPO, I'll give you all the details. i update you all. So this is uh, the same slide that I did for my the Cai Miao deep dive uh, last, uh, I think like six months ago. I, I did cover before Cai Miao. And this is the 2022 data. So this is uh, Li Li. li, li. I to, to, tohu, uh, tohu. This is a research uh, platform. Uh. So uh, this, this is a research report on the China. So I only take this part on, on the shareholder. So who are the major shareholders of China? Alibaba holds a 48% stake in China. So that is us. So once the IPO, they can give high chance that uh, they will distribute the shares to us. So that's how they want to unlock value. So but I'm not very keen to get the Cai Niao shares. The, sh the one that I want most is Ali Cup and N Group. This two is the crown jewel. Or oh, this, this is this two is the steak. Or oh, the mushroom soup uh, and the ice cream uh, is the Cai Niao and Fresh Hippo. I'm interested in the main course, which is the uh, M Financial and the uh, uh, M Financial and the Ali Cup. But now no steak uh, uh, eat the mushroom soup first also can. No 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 problem. Eat the apple. so. We eat the China as an appetizer first. So they have uh, other important shareholders. So these three, right, they are actually investment holding company. So you see there's the Ji Tuan. Ji Tuan means group. Uh, so this is in Thai Ji Tuan, in time group. So their main business is departmental store. So Alibaba actually partnered with them to take their departmental store private. And now it become O2O, online to offline. So Alibaba is doing this strategy to disrupt like shopping malls, disrupt uh, departmental stores, uh, disrupt the uh, groceries. So like the entire group, right? Example, they are very. You think about like if you are a Singapore viewer, you think about it like uh, what uh, Takashimaya. You think about it about tanks or uh, all those big departmental stores. So people buy makeup from there. So you will see the staff doing live streams, all this to promote their products. Yeah, then the other group is actually Fuchun Ji Tuan. It's also a holding company. And uh, they are a platform to provide also uh, logistics uh, support and uh, electronics uh, products also. Tian Sang Wu Liu. So uh, there's also the Fu Xing Ji Tuan. Uh, it's also uh, also it's an investment group. Tou Zi Qi Ye means it's an investment group. Uh, uh, so that's why, so basically Alibaba, then they partner, the other shareholders are mostly uh, investment holding companies. Then the last 5% right, is under uh, the Sun, Sun Fu and San Tong Ita. San Tong Ita is the, the Zhong Tong, Yun Tong uh, and, uh, what, uh, and Yun Ta. 
so GTO, YTO, ZTO la, and Winta, all these are and are the logistic players. They are very small player. So that's why this so if you are a small player, right, it doesn't make sense to spend billions of dollars to build your own software, build your own enterprise system. So all these smaller logistic players, they just tap into the Chinese network. And for the other holding companies, right, they also participate in e-commerce, like the Inkai is in departmental store. Then uh, the other two, I think they are also in like uh, electronics and manufacturing. So in the end, they, they, they tap the Chai now to do the logistics to deliver their goods to the customer. That's why they are also a cornerstone investor. So the big question is, they're going to sell 10%. Is it, is it for these holding companies to reduce their stake or are they raising capital to expand? I think most likely they'll be raising capital like, because we see that Chai now they have invested heavily I, like example in Singapore, the Alibaba group actually spent I think 1.5 billion sing to build their HQ here and the headquarters will be shared by businesses such as Chai Niao, Alipay and also Lazada. So uh, Singapore is their headquarters for these companies to attack in to attack the Southeast Asia market. So that, that's where Alibaba wants to find the next stage of growth. So I, I, I'm also happy for that. Yeah, so that's all my sharing for the China logistics. So I think there's a lot of value to be unlocked. So we, we look at 25 billion market cap being unlocked. Alibaba now, the traded market cap is 200 billion. So easily we are unlocking 10%. So tonight is only up 4% because this is just rumors. But once we confirm the IPO next week and it's locked in and we know that it's confirmed 25 billion valuation, or whatever, then we can see another six percent upside. So China logistics alone is worth a ten percent upside. China only, like, and this is just the appetizer. It's worth a ten percent upside. And Group and Alicao, once they announce and give the details, it's like 20, 30 percent, or even forty percent upside kind of rally. So just wait for the main course. Meanwhile, enjoy your appetizer. Then next, I will talk. Uh, you go into the deep dive lah, on the Sing Song supermarket. Also, because I, I did the vote, you, you all want me to cover Sing Song and Dairy Farm instead of the China Telco. So Dairy Farm, I'll cover it later. Then the Ch Chinese Telco, uh, in the future, I'll also cover. Don't don't worry, Master is here to help you all, uh, and educate you all <laughs> and serve you all. Okay, I read some comments before I go into my the Sing Song deep dive which is the main cause uh, for tonight. Lazy investor market is thinking there will be drop soon, but Fed seems want to maintain and not raise because inflation is sticky. I think if Feds do one more hike in October, the, the market will drop 10%. <laughs> so much fear. Leh. They haven't even hiked rate. Huh? They, they hold the rates there, then market drop 2%, 2% like that. Wow, I think there's a lot of fear because I think US market the valuations are on the, the high side. Vivian Ng, this time now, if become fake news or delayed by hippo, if it's fake news, then the boat will come back. Uh. I hope it's real news. Uh. Hope they don't keep playing with our emotion. Uh. Yep, CH, uh, Fed hit limit now. See who can tahan. Fed, I think uh, they are a bit scared that they crash the market. So they have to be very, very careful. Lazy investor, next year election, they won't want to crash the economy. Yes, they cannot crash the economy. They cannot crash the stock market. If the stock market crash, right, the thing is, Americans, right, a lot of their net worth is tied to the stock market. I read a uh, analysis uh, before, a long time ago. They say that American, right, 70% of their wealth is in the stock market. Whereas Chinese, right, like China, right, 70% of their wealth is tied in hard asset, like property and gold. So Americans, they, they like the soft asset, like bonds and, and stocks, those kind of things. A uh, small you the overall market is so weak, any rally will be short term. Yeah, so that's why I want to talk about Sing Song. Uh, do you want? That's why, and now the Singapore market is crashing. So, Singapore market crashing, I see opportunities. So, why I don't want to cover US market? Because US market all is very expensive. Uh. Amazon, Nvidia, Tesla, Palantir, all this very expensive, very hype up. So, I don't think now is a good time to buy into the US market. Whereas Chinese market is very cheap, but I've talked a lot about Alibaba, Tencent already. Singapore market is starting to look cheap. That's why 
uh, I want to have a strategy for you all. If you want to go for capital gains, then of course uh, it's like Alibaba SE, uh, go for the tech companies. But a lot of my audience, I look at my back-end data, most of you all are like 30 to 60 years old. Half of you all is like in your 30s and 40s. Half of you all are actually in your 50s and 60s. So those that's why I realized that my dividend uh, stocks, the views is very high. Like I talk about weeks, I got 2,000 views. Then I'm surprised. Mine is the Alibaba channel. Why when I talk about weeks, the views is so good? Then I check my data. Actually, a lot of you are actually in your 50s and 60s. But don't worry, I won't expose your age. I also don't know your age. So I believe that many of your portfolio, right, you all cannot do 100% growth like what I'm doing. You all, because of your age, that like you are in your... 50s and 60s, uh, I hope that maybe half is in growth, half is in dividends. That's why I also don't want to like overly aggressive. Uh, that uh, I realize that whatever stocks I talk about, like Alibaba and SE, you all will follow me all in and buy. So I have to be careful with my recommendation. I don't want to recommend all the high risk growth stocks also. So I want to recommend some dividend stocks for you all to balance out your portfolio. So example like Sing Song, Sing Song has a 4% dividend yield, very defensive, why? Sing Song is a supermarket, even recession like we saw in the COVID or the lockdowns, you, what you need, you, recession you lose your job or the whole world is in lockdown, you stay at home, you eat your Maggi Mee, you cook your white rice, put the egg, you fry your leftover rice with the luncheon meat, then after that you diarrhea, then you use the toilet paper to wipe your ass. So toilet paper, rice, instant noodle, eggs, you all you'll get from the supermarket. In fact, when the economy slows down, whenever there's a recession, supermarket, the price go up. Uh, the, 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 the revenues go up. Then the restaurants, they lose their business because nobody will go the Ting Tai Fung. Thus, we have the Ting Tai Fung Index. The Ting Tai Fung Index is starting to fade down already. The, the US economy is slowing down. Singapore, which is very dependent on our export to US is also slowing down. Singapore likely 1% GDP growth this year. Next year also 1% GDP growth. Singapore economy is uh, slowing down. Well, that's why I want to uh, tell you all about all these companies. MT Pals, welcome, welcome. Ming Wei Tei, welcome, welcome. Nip Nip, Baba valuation so low. Uh, that other businesses are basically free. Yeah, the six businesses that they list is all bonus to us. Nip Nip can make a pool, see how many people will keep or sell Cai Niao. Oh yeah, I have a pool. I forgot to get about my poll, poll already. Oh, M poll. Okay. So, I did a poll. Uh, uh, worth is over for Baba. Yes. 63% of you all say that. 80% was the low. But now leaving pot. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, 36% say no. Uh, might crash further. Might crash lower. See how. So two thirds of you are optimistic, one third uh, pessimistic. But I, I'm under the optimistic camp lah. I, I hope that they keep IPO, uh, keep unlocking uh, value for us. Anigo, US market was stagnant for 1.5 months. I think there's a lot of fear now. A lot of people will take profit. Ben C, how good is JD? I talk about JD many times. The core business, e-commerce business is no good because they lack the social media presence. They are not strong in live streaming. Uh, uh, but then recent uh, data like the iPhone sales is very good. Uh, JD is strong at electronics. JD, the crown jewel is the logistic business. Whereas uh, Alibaba, the, the uh, top of life is doing well. The live streams, all this. Yeah. So JD Express, yeah. JD Express is a competitor. That's why the uh, Cai Niao IPO, they changed the underwriter because the underwriter previously was doing the JD Express IPO. So, so now they change the under JD Express in Singapore. We, we also see, yeah. But JD Express, if I'm not wrong, is a uh, loss making. Uh. They they are they need to burn money to capture market share. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me go into the the sing song. Yeah. Uh. As set is China now the most profitable uh sub business. Uh, not really. Uh. The the profit a bit only. The most profitable sub business is N Group. N Group is the most profitable one. Uh, Adi Cloud, Cai Niao, Fresh Hippo, all this, they are either a bit loss making or a bit small profit making, break even only. Uh, not really like super cash cow mode. They are still in uh, growth mode. La. 
in, in, in that sense. Yeah, okay, so so let me go into Sing Song already. Let's go, Sing Song. Super defensive uh stock. So during like I mentioned, during recession, like two zero two two zero, what we saw, the crazy auntie. People say, wow, dogs con rate, uh, dogs con rate means uh, lockdown. Uh. So everywhere in the world, you see the toilet paper instant noodle being sold down. You see this auntie, wow, so happy, so confident. Take all the instant noodle, go out and, and check out. And we had a uh, panic buying. That's why suddenly in 2020, supermarkets, the business boom. And the uh, sing song, the stock price also boom. So which, which was over here, you see the stock price went up to almost $1.80. So it used to be a one dollar stock, like eighty cents to one dollar. I I bought and sold Sing Song quite a few times. I got it during the IPO, then it went to fifty, sixty cents. I sold it. Then I bought it back at eighty cents. Then it went up to one dollars. I sold it. Every time I sell it, it goes higher. So my story is Sing Song is full of regrets. The problem is I ah, both the stocks I pick are always good, always good stocks. But master always sell take profit. But I'm tempted to buy a, a, another company that I feel is more undervalued. So from $1 pre-COVID, it went to almost 180. It almost doubled in, in price uh, during the, the lockdown period. So revenues also boom. So pre-COVID was making about uh, 1, 1 billion uh, in revenues. Then it jumped 40%, 40% growth uh, during the COVID period. But as people, they don't go to restaurants, they, they Go to the supermarket, they buy everything they need, then they cook at home. And also Grab saw a boom uh, in the food delivery. So sit in, dine in, uh, the, the business really suffered. So after the boom, what happened? Are they able to sustain or not? So the biggest worry is that after the boom, people go out to the restaurants, then the business crash. The answer is no. The business did not crash. Instead, revenues hold up sideways. So it's actually a good thing that the revenues did not crash. People are still spending a lot uh, in the supermarket because they realize that uh, that is still the place that they want to get their basic needs. And also the drop right is also offset by inflation. You realize that your toilet paper is more expensive. Your canned luncheon meat, the price is up 20%. Your cup noodle, last time it's like $1, 120 I just bought two Nissin cup noodle, the curry fish head. Uh, noodle is not not bad. You all can try new flavor. Two for two ninety five. That's three dollars. So it's one fifty. I used to pay one dollar one twenty for my Nissin cup noodle. Now I'm paying one fifty. So it's up fifty percent already for my uh, cup noodle inflation. So it's a bit offset lah. People buy less, but the uh, there's less traffic, but the prices went up. So that's why revenues uh, are flat. So if you look at earnings per share. Uh, it went down a bit, but now it's going up. So it's a bit on the uptrend, but why? It's because of the management of their margins. So it, uh, during the COVID period, right, they paid their staff, I think, eight-month bonus. <laughs> yeah, then you see on the newspaper that say, wow, if I want my daughter to marry a sing-song worker. Wow, I do want my uh, daughter to, to marry a banker. Or marry sing-song manager better, got eight-month bonus. So Sing Song, they are very good to their staff. Uh, you, you, when, when they make a lot of money, they give the staff bonus. It's also quite good. Uh. So during COVID period, they actually give eight month bonus. Now I think usually the bonus is like two or three months. So 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 that that's pretty good. So uh, now right, how uh, Sing Song benefit post COVID? So we saw uh, the CDC voucher. So it benefits up to 1.3 million household. This started in 2021. So 2020 was the COVID. So 21 onwards, right? In order to say, call, win our heart, uh, get the votes uh, for the coming election, they started to give like GST voucher, CDC voucher, then your utilities rebate. So it's a good thing because once, number one, it helped the common folks uh, to fight inflation. And number two, uh, it, it, it made us happy la, so that we will vote for them, <laughs> so that we will uh, uh, maintain the same uh, kind of system. Uh. So uh, it's a win-win situation. La. Then for the supermarket, right, their business is maintained because there's free hot money uh, going into this industry. So 1.3 million Singapore household. So in the beginning, it was $100 CDC voucher. So that's like 100 
thirty million. Now it's three hundred dollars. Half of it is for the neighborhood stores. Half of it is for supermarket. So hundred fifty times one point three million Singapore household. That's a lot. That's almost two hundred million of spending of revenues going into our all these uh, supermarkets in Singapore and in supermarket industry. The big three is NTUC Fair Price, which is government owned. Number two is Sing Song. Number three is uh, Giant. So these three are, are, are the top top players. Uh. the others they, they are a smaller player. So Giant is under Dairy Farm, which I, I will do a deep dive uh, in very soon. Uh, very soon, maybe this week or next week. We, we see how it goes. So two hundred two hundred uh, million. So that actually boosts the supermarket sales. So you can see that although their revenues is flat, they are able to increase their profit margins. Why? By selling house brand. So what is house brand? Example, you buy potato chip, you see beside there'll be like cabby or the Japanese brand, the potato chip or $1.80. Then beside you'll see the Sing Song house brand, $1 only. So you see that for a lot of products, like you buy the cooking oil, you will see the heritage olive oil. Original brand maybe nine eighty, house brand uh, nine twenty, nine fifty. So what they do for house brand is that right? They steal the business of the original top seller. Whatever is the top seller, right? They go and find their manufacturer. Their manufacturer of let's say potato chips could be in Malaysia. So they go to the Malaysia. A manufacturer that make the potato chips they get a deal then it's the same package the same potato chip the same cheese flake the, the same uh, uh, sweet and sour cream sauce uh, sauce whatever it's exactly the same thing yes, that they put their own brand on, on it like happy family or this that they sell it at a lower price so they are in the past right let's say i i sell is that the top brand right the margins are actually very low like maybe just like uh, 10 or 20 percent so basically what happens is the manufacturer produce it they sell it to the brand company the brand company then sell it to Sing Song they distribute it to Sing Song so Sing Song is more like a middleman and they earn the commission It's more like a platform so by eliminating the branded company they just get straight from the manufacturer the manufacturer and they straight away ship it to the supermarket and they sell it so they capture the maximum profit and they don't have to spend marketing money they just place their house brand beside the original brand can already and they just sell it at a lower lower price so for me right of the three supermarket right the one i go the most is sing song because master is a poor man usually right for this shopping mall right you notice that giant and uh, that uh for the dairy farm right, they have giant and cold storage then for N NTUC fair price right you notice that NTUC fair price they operate a lot is in the shopping mall so for Sing Song right their initial strategy is Xiang Chun Tao Chen it means village surround the castle in the past like in the 1990s 1980s the way we go supermarket is go to the shopping mall neighborhood only got the small provision shop so the new strategy that they had right which is uh, initiated by Sing Song is they don't rent in the shopping mall because the rental is very high. They will rent a shop house, big shop houses or big areas that is around the shopping mall in the neighborhood area. Yeah, you see one NTOC, but around it there's two or three uh Sing Song. That is Xiang Chun Tao Chen Chen. So people that don't have to travel far, you just go within a 10 minute walk or from your HDB flat, you can find a Sing Song already. And you just buy, then you push the trolley or go back. But but the bad thing is a lot of people push the Sing Song trolley back home, they leave it down at the void deck. Uh that, that's why I hate a lot. So that that's their strategy. Then for dairy farm, right? Cold storage is the atas one, it's like NTOC. Giant is, is the cheap one. That's how they, they, they uh segmentize. Then for me, right, I like to buy Sing Song, it's like my tissue paper, I will use the softness, soft softness brand your toilet paper, tissue paper. So it's cheaper than the, the regular brands. The regular brand I used to use is called Butex. Uh, Butex, maybe they, they sell is like $5. Then softness will be like four eighty, twenty 20 cents cheaper. So it's actually exactly the same. For me, right, toilet paper is toilet paper. I just see two ply or three ply. 
Then it's like a 20 cent cheaper, I get the house brand. Same for Tasty Bite, then you'll see like Nugget, Fish Finger. So the house brand is a bit cheaper because they save on the marketing. Yeah, so uh, the house brand is the one that help push their profitability. They only started house brand, I think like uh, five or six years ago. So five or six years ago, house brand was 0% of their revenues. Now house, house brand is about eight to 10%. Of their revenues so if I sell like the Butex right or oh, which is the branded uh, toilet paper to, to wipe my ass or oh, I sell uh, $5 maybe I earn 20% margin I earn $1 only but I sell softness 480 my cost uh, is maybe just two three dollars only I sell 480 I can make 30 40 percent uh, margin that's why my margins are much higher then yeah so then uh, in the supermarket, right, there's a like two product category. That one is like the, the fresh meat, fresh seafood. The other one is the pa packaged good. So usually like fresh foods, fresh vegetables, fresh meat, right, the margins are very high. 30, 40, 50% also. The the packaged good is actually the low margin one. Like you sell a Coca-Cola, one can of Coke, how, how are you going to make big margin? So that, that's the thing. Oh, but, but certain products, you, you cannot sell house brand like Coca-Cola. People go for Coca because that's the brand, they recognize the taste. You, they won't go for the unbranded one. Uh, so, but more and more of their products, they, are, they have their own house brand already. Usually those are like your basic household things are like rice, or as long as you know it's from what country, like Thai, fragrant rice, or Vietnam rice, which region it, it is, or like toilet paper, cooking oil, all this, that uh, there's, no, there's no need to differentiate. Whereas, Things that you consume, like like things that you drink, like canned drinks, that one you cannot do the house brand. But most everything else, uh, yeah, the the house brand is getting more and more attractive. Then the big push factor now, right, is that higher interest rate. High interest rate, uh, both like you know in Singapore, right, you have a house loan or car loan. Your loan is only fixed like the first uh, two or three years. So your loan is thirty years for your house. First two three years is fixed or uh, one point five percent two percent whatever low rate. After that, the fixed rate is gone. It becomes a floating rate, and now interest rate is three percent four percent going five percent. So people have to pay more to service their loan, uh, for house loan and car loan. That means they have less discretionary money to spend. They also need to pay more for their electricity bills. So now like me right, wow my, my, my three room flat, I'm paying like what 150 or to uh, almost like 200, 150 to 200 for my, 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 my the money bills. If it was three years ago, I think it's easily 100 to 150. It's up almost 20, 30%. I, I feel that, that the energy prices, the uti utility prices. So people are spending more on their home mortgage and their uh, utilities. Then you buy car COE record. Uh, high price or oh, the latest is new all-time high rental also re rental is is higher then uh you take public transport public transport prices up seven percent you go outside eat chai peng chai peng is from three dollar become four dollar five dollar so everything more and more expensive so you have less money to spend on your uh, basic needs so when people are have less money to spend right they'll be very selective they want the same product because you need every month you need to buy toilet paper am i right so they they go for the house brand that's why house brand the sales is exploding yeah so that's why i like this direction i like the house brand that they can improve their profit margins yeah so some factors actually push revenues down like the reopening but some factors push the revenues up so house brand right when you sell your house brand you actually your revenues actually drop because you are selling the same toilet paper at a lower price but your margins are higher uh, because you cut away uh, the branded company so for this year 2023 right the first half results revenue went up by two percent so this is about in line with so-called inflation uh, so-called but the profits down three percent so why why revenues up two percent but why profits is not up uh, two percent or uh, two main reasons is also due to inflation so they are unable to pass the cost down so 
one thing about the supermarket right is that uh, example I, I'm selling like the canned food uh, like the luncheon meat uh, toilet paper all this uh. if inflation is 10% right I every year I raise my luncheon meat price by 10% my rice price by 10%, the, the consumers they run away they say what well, sing song I buy the rice $6 now $7 so expensive I go and buy from NTUC NTUC is uh, 620 650 they never raise the price so much so the problem with a supermarket right is if you pass your cost entirely to your customer right your customer will run away you cannot raise your prices aggressively it has to be very gradual that's why the revenues is only up two percent or if you raise your price by five percent ten percent right they will go to your competitor giant or fair price so so that's the problem uh, but eventually right they will keep hiking up their prices every year right? every year your toilet paper your canned food your instant noodle will be more and more expensive but why the profit uh, drop to one is labor cost so you notice that uh, in, in Sing Song right, there's a lot of foreign talent uh, or a lot of them are actually from Malaysia but due to nowadays right there's a ratio uh, like example every five Singaporean you can hire one foreigner and now it, it keep tightening already or uh, may, maybe now in the past maybe you two or three Singaporean you can hire one Malaysian now you need five six or eight uh, Singaporean they can hire one Malaysian so it's more difficult to get cheap labor example you are a Singaporean or let's say you, you are my age 40s or, or you are 50s then your child is like uh, 20 over years old or uh, did not make it to local you only got diploma or ITE do you want your child to work in Sing Song? For me, I, I actually I want my my staff, my, 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 my kid. If he's, he's like just finished NS, just come out work, I want him to work at Sing Song one year or to embrace the hard work, to have a strong culture of working hard. But I like the Sing Song culture a lot. <coughs> but most parents won't. Most parents will say, ah, boy, ah, I give you uh, 50k, 60k, ah, go study private one. Ah or go get degree ah, upgrade yourself ah, don't work at Sing Song ah. so Singaporeans nobody want to work at Sing Song the, the Sing Song you go and see that it's always the aunties the the the, the, the retirees ah, they, they work there part-time now ah. so they hire a lot the locals is like part-time one the full-time is like the Malaysians ah. and it's hard to get it ah. hard, hard to get them so in the past you see that like, wow maybe like I, I go to the Sing Song right the cashier right almost all of them is Malaysian but now it's like half Singapore, uh, half, half Malaysia. Even the so-called Singapore uh, local staff right, is actually like, I, I, I mentioned uh, a lot of my friends have like a uh, foreign wife, like Vietnam one or the Philippines one. Wow, then sometimes then my, my side, uh, oh, the, the same song, I, I don't say where. Uh, wow, got one is Vietnamese one. But I think she's Singaporean already. Otherwise, how come she work in the same song? Wow. See be chill one every time huh, I, I, I check out I also want to queue a counter but a counter right always a lot of people right? all the uncle will, will queue to check what well, she very pretty right yes like what like 28 like that wow oh, then at the same song at the cashier but but she's Singaporean already la also so labor cost is very high because uh, you need to hire more local and local that the pay is higher of Malaysian that the cheap labor is harder to get so that's the difference you see administrative expenses increased by uh, uh, 11.3 million or uh, to record 1 to 7 million so that's almost a 10 percent increase that eh? you see you see your cost increased by 10 percent but you cannot pull part you cannot increase your luncheon meat and instant noodle price by 10 percent so that's the problem then the next one is utilities like higher energy prices then like Sing Song, you see a lot of their supermarket, they run 24 hour. So you need a lot of energy to run the lights, to run the machines, to run the freezer. So both labor costs and both energy costs is a problem. That's why cost is up 11 million, up almost 8 to 10%. But you cannot pass the rising cost to the consumers. <coughs> but on the flip side, right, Sing Song is a super cash count. So Pre-COVID, they had like uh, 76 million in their balance sheet. Now they have 275. Eh. That's a lot. Cash and cash equivalent is 275 million. Their market cap is about 1.25 billion. Eh. So almost 20% of their market cap is in cash. 
So you notice one similarity is every time when I talk about uh, all these picks that I recommend to, to your, like I say your cash cow, all this, usually a cash cow, right? Wow, they have like 10 to 50% of their market cap in cash. So they are very cash generative and they have very little debt. So uh, people who misunderstand Sing Song, they think that they are highly geared. Because that you see that they have their balance sheet, they have a lot of liabilities, they have a lot of assets, it's because they don't understand the business. So one of their big liability, right, is the payables. So payables is what? They get the supply. They get the toilet paper from the supplier. Then they tell the supplier, I'll pay you back later in 30 or 60 days. So that is a payable and that's a liability. So they don't use any cash. They just get the toilet paper up front, then they sell it to you. They sell to you already, you pay cash, right? They get the money, then they pay the suppliers. So zero capital capital needed. So they are actually very asset light. They leverage on the supplier's balance sheet. They don't use their own balance sheet. So that's the amazing thing about the supermarket. That's what I love about the supermarket. Yeah, and that's that's one of their, their strengths. And because they are so rep reputable, because they have so much bargaining power. For example, if you don't let me pay you 30, 60 days later, then I don't put your products on my shelf. You can go and find other supermarket. Yeah, that's why the top three supermarket, they have a lot of bargaining power uh, with the suppliers. That's why you see that they, they, they are balance sheet, they have asset and liabilities, they are heavily geared, but they leverage on the supplier. And, and this is not a risk. Yeah, if they cannot sell finish, it, it, it's, it's okay. Yeah, that, but definitely they, they can sell finish one. Huh? Usually, usually they don't have an inventory problem huh? because all these basic products, it moves very fast. Uh, so it's not, I'm not going to do a very deep dive until like, well, I talk about cash conversion cycle, huh? how many days they need to turn their inventory, all this. That one is too nerdy, eh? that, that one. Huh? But, but those who are experts, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. Lah. But I'm not going to talk about cash conversion cycle or this. Of course, you have the rough idea can already. You know that it's a cash cow. They leverage on the supplier. They move their goods very fast. That's, that's good already. So they have a track record of profitability. But revenues and earnings are stagnant. So what they're going to do? So, same thing for Alibaba. Alibaba has a lot of cash. So uh, they can do share buybacks. They can pay dividends, they can do acquisition. So there, there are a lot of things that they, they can do. Like for Alibaba, they choose to do the share buybacks, they're gonna give us, uh, they're gonna list their companies and give it to us as special dividends. So for uh, Seng Song, right, they have still room for organic growth. So over the past 10 years, from 2013 to 2023, the number of stores have doubled. From 33 stores to 68 stores, in Singapore, in China, they have, they have five stores. So 30, total, they have 73 stores. So actually, they more than doubled the numbers of stores in Singapore. So is this a growth stock? My answer is yes. But it's not a super growth stock like, like high growth tech, uh, like China Logistics, every year up 3, 3, 30, 40%. Not, not that kind. It's actually a slow grower. A slow grower. Also, slow and steady grower. So for the management, right, they target to open at least three stores each year so that's at least uh, or technically let's say you have 68 store you open three store every year that's about four percent growth at least four percent growth based on number of stores if they can open four or five or even six stores then that that's five or even ten percent growth but to be conservative i would say based on store count i think a five percent growth rate is not difficult why because you look at singapore we are still urbanizing why? Because government want us to buy BTO. Government want us to have children, get married, have children. So all this new HDB area, like like Tengah, I remember Tengah, oh, is a good place to BTO. It's undervalued. Like you can get like four room flat for three hundred k. IPO, uh, about IPO, BTO, low risk, high return. So if you are single or above thirty five, or you are in your twenties, ah, uh, faster get married. ROM, uh, then uh, go and apply for BTO or don't need to marry also BTO. Teng ah, teng ah very undervalued. So all these new areas, right, you can open Sing Song store. So there's room to open new store. No problem. Uh. So the next part is China also. They are uh, investing. So China, 
uh, in in the uh, southern part la, or in the Kunming area is where they operate. So the China business they only own a sixty percent stake. The other forty percent stake uh, is the by the man China the management team la. So the management team was the the ex uh, I think is the ex COO. The COO left uh, left the company to help do the startup in China. So it's a forty sixty uh, partnership la. They started with I think a uh, one million dollar capital or what, and now from one store it has grown organically without capital injection. So this is organic growth. It's self funded, and three out of four of their Kunming store in China is profitable. They just opened their fifth store in the first half of this year. So they have five, five, five store. So total sixty eight in uh, Singapore, five in China. They have seventy three outlets. So. I think every year they can open three or four uh, outlet, no problem. This year they open one, one, one outlet already. So hopefully the second half they can open another two more outlet. So Seng Song, right? Like I mentioned, when you invest in a stock, there's two return. One is capital gains. Number two is uh dividends. So for Seng Song, right? Their cash cow, their earnings revenue is very predictable. So they are paying about six. Let's take it easy. Uh, six cents plus uh, in, in dividends but one thing you notice is that dividends has been declining uh, during 2-0 right the lockdown period was the peak of the dividend 6.5 cents then they picked uh, 6.2 then uh, 6.2 2. so 2-1 and 2-2 is about the same now uh, but then dividend has come down a bit and this year the the first half of the dividends was actually reduced because we saw a, a earnings dropping by 3% so for them, right, their dividend policy is very straightforward. They pay out 70% of their earnings. They earn more, they pay more. They earn less, they pay less. So last year, the interim dividend was 3.15. This year, they already declared already. So it's 3.05. It will be paid out, I think, in August. Also, already already paid already. The interim already paid 3.05. So full year, we can take it as 6.10. So the current price is 1.5, so that's about a 4% dividend yield as your base return. So if you get the dividends, uh, what does it mean? So is it a good investment or not? 4%, you put your money in fixed deposit, also can get 4%. So we might as well put your money in a fixed deposit, you get 4% risk-free. But what I feel about Sing Song is that you have an upside and your downside is limited. Your downside is limited because it's a very defensive stock one. Earnings and revenue is hard to crash because recession, people buy rice, buy toilet paper. Economy, what? People also buy rice, buy toilet paper. Good or bad times, people still buy rice, buy toilet paper. Your revenues and earnings is still there. And every year, they can open three stores, three new outlets or four new outlets to grow organically. So what I'm looking at is actually 4% dividends and 6% growth. Well, like I mentioned like three, three additional stores every year, so that's about 6% growth. But if the management fail to execute, fail to have growth, then no, then there's no capital gains. Then you just have your dividends. So your base return is 4%. Then if there is growth in the number of outlets, then that's another 6%. So total returns, you can make 10%. You can compound your money at 10% on Seng Song. So it's 10% a good if enough return for you or not. Uh, you, then you have to think about it. I think if you buy Sing Song, you want to compound at 10%, it's not difficult. And this is not a high risk stock. Uh, uh. So uh, for me, right, I mentioned that uh, a lot of people, a lot of bird, bird follow me all in Baba, all in SE. For me, I myself, I all in and I'm on leverage, I'm not worried because that's my risk appetite. But for you, I look at your, wow, your age, uh, wow, you are also same as me in my 40 already, then you're still so high risk. I worry for you all. That's why I also recommend some like uh, like Sing Song. This. Sing Song is actually low risk, decent return. Uh, I don't expect Sing Song uh, to, it cannot go bankrupt one. It's profit making and so much cash in the balance sheet, same as Alibaba. But Alibaba is more undervalued. Alibaba is a value play. You buy it at 80, 85, the fair value is 200, 300. So that's value investing. And I believe that if you buy Alibaba at like $100 and lower, you can compound your money at 20 to 30%. Uh, the returns is very high, but the risk is high because it is uninvestable country, it's from China. 
uh, so called uninvestable country. Then for SE, it's also high risk, high return. Like I mentioned, uh, their e commerce, their payment business can grow at 30%. But SE is a high growth tech, it doesn't have a track record of profitability, unlike Samsung and Alibaba. Samsung is low risk, medium return. So it's more like a defensive play. So Alibaba, Samsung, and SE, they are all different play. Alibaba is a value pick. SE is a high growth, high return, high risk pick. Samsung is a low risk defensive pick, or which is a hybrid between dividend and, and a bit of growth. Or so if you buy Samsung, you expect 20-30% growth, you will be disappointed. La, because the future is still e-commerce SE. La. So SE, you can expect 20-30% growth in their e-commerce and payment. Samsung, the growth will be low. La. 5%, 6% uh, revenue growth at best la, uh, going, going forward. So one thing, one red flag that I must point out to you all. Uh, so my question with, for you all, do you think that DBS CEO, the pay at 15.4 million is expensive? So in the whole Singapore SGX, right, the highest paid CEO is uh, uh, Piyush uh, Gupta, but He's 15.4 million, right? I think he deserves the pay because he really done an excellent job for DBS. You see DBS, the good track record of revenue and earnings growth and quarterly dividend. So DBS is also, I recommended you all before also that DBS, among the three banks, my, my top pick is DBS. Then I also talk about the five Tiger General, DBS Bank, and now I'm covering Sing Song. So I'm giving you all more, more options. So DBS, I also like, but DBS, now it's expensive, la, $33. I think the, uh, DBS only $30 or lower, then I will give a buy call. La. Now I think DBS is still a bit expensive and it's coming down. So he's the highest paid CEO at 15.4 million. So people will complain that, wow, see, you see, wow, DBS CEO so hot, la, or pay raise 13.2%. Uh, you work, work as a salary worker, your boss raise your pay by 2-3% only. Pathetic. <laughs> so people complain uh, and say that the DBS CEO is overpaid. Uh. Wow, 15.4 million can buy a few condo every year already or whatever. So I don't think he's overly paid. Uh, we should pay for, for performance. If, if you raise his pay by 13.2%, but he can grow the company revenues and earnings by 10-15-20%, then I think it's reasonable, it's in line. Uh. So I don't think it's overly paid. So you all want to guess the Sing Song, the management team, do you think their pay is higher or lower than the DBS CEO? I give you all five seconds to think about it. Higher or lower? Let me know your answer. Okay, so I give you all the answer. Uh. I don't want to waste time. So the Sing Song management team is paid higher than the DBS CEO. DBS is the largest market cap company in Singapore. I, I forgot what is the market cap already. I think the market cap is 30 or 50 billion. Uh, whereas Hing Song is only 1.2 billion. But the Lim brothers, so it's the three brothers, uh, Lim Hock, Ng, Hock Chi, Hock Ling. Uh, then uh, Ling Xia is the CFO. Uh, so the four of them together, their salary is more than 20 million. So. <laughs> I think it's quite expensive. They are paying themselves uh, very well. Very, 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 very well. So uh, that that is a part that I dislike. But one thing on the flip side, like you look at like uh, like US market, there's a lot of dilution. Uh, so they have that stock options, all this. But in the Singapore market, we don't have this kind of bullshit. <coughs> the The... Management team don't have options, all this bullshit one. Uh. The number of shares every year is, is the same. Uh. They don't they don't print shares. Uh. They don't do anything unethical. Uh, and they are very transparent. Uh, that, that they give themselves high salary. Yeah. So what what does uh twenty million mean? Twenty million means that I think their gross profit is hundred and twenty or hundred and or, or, and fifty million. So almost 15% of your profit goes to the management team. 15%. And so so that's a lot. That's that's a lot. It's higher than REITs. Like you purchase a REIT, right? Every month you collect, let's say $10,000 in rental. 10% goes to the REIT manager. 
So I did the deep dive on why dividend investing sucks. Uh, because the risk manager, they, they earn a lot from you as the unit holder. The, typically, a risk manager takes 10% of your net property income. And that's a lot. And I dislike. Then for the management thing, saying song, right? They are taking 15% of your profits every year. That's very high. That's above the norm already. Also, this is what I dislike. Lah, but, but no choice. Lah. But, but overall, this is already factored in already. Like attention that you buy Sing Song, you can compound at 10% return. This is already factored in. Lah. If, if they give a more normal kind of salary, lah, like they pay themselves like $1 million each. Lah. Because they themselves, they already own a lot of shares. Uh, yet, yet they still pay themselves high salary. So that's the thing I don't like about the Singapore market. Those companies that are founder owned, right, they tend to pay themselves very high salary. Yeah, because there's no one to object to them. The whole board of directors is all their friends and relatives. So you have to vote with your feet. Lah. Yeah, if you think they are overpaid, you, you don't buy their, their stock. If you are think they are fairly paid, then you buy their stock. So the only bad thing, lah, I look at the same song, but no company is perfect. Lah. The, the bad thing is that their management team is a bit o overpaid. So that, that's the warning I have. Lah. So that's all my sharing. So don't know you're going to watch the same song show or not. Uh, every Saturday 9 p.m. Lah, the old folks like to watch it. Lah. So if when you sign the slip ah, for the lucky draw on sing song, ah, Make sure you purchase at least hundred dollar or more. La. If you buy twenty thirty dollar, you won't get selected one. La. They got shooter. La. So the joke is that they, they call the person to say that congratulation you, you congratulations you get hundred times. So if your receipt is hundred dollar, you spin or you open the box, you can get hundred times your money la. You can get uh, ten ten thousand dollar payout. So they call the person. Then they are uh, then the person asks, but the person speak in a very weird dialect. Ha. Then the host talk, ah, ni su ta nai nai. No, no, actually he's, the person is saying who's on the line. Oh, so, oh, a bit like a bimbo bimbo like that. Yeah. Uh, then it became a very a big joke, la, a meme like that. So that's all my sharing. La. So nowadays I cover US, China and Singapore market. La, but genuinely I feel that US market is still on the expensive side. La. Because as a value hunter, you want to buy great companies that are undervalued. So Baba, SE, uh, Seng Song, all these are, are, are great companies. DBS are also, uh, is also a great company. So you want to buy them when they are fairly priced or undervalued. Yeah, of course, uh, Baba and SE is more undervalued than Seng Song. But Seng Song is the type that you buy Seng Song, you will sleep well at night. Uh. You won't have nightmare one. Uh. You buy Alibaba, you at night, oh, stress, uh, oh, crash, uh, oh, stress. You buy sing song, you sleep very well at night. Yeah. So so that's all my sharing. Oh, Th thanks for support. Oh yeah. Mister Tokyo Me, this is a synergy with the Kim Lee. Huh? Kim Lee, I also covered lah. Uh, it's the coffee shop lah. Uh, oh, uh, a si uh, si synergize uh. Wow, so many comment uh. I, I, I will skip uh. Wow, you're all good friend already lah. Uh. Jefferson, uh, sing song is not a supermarket business. It's a real estate business. Yeah. So. For Sing Song, right, they own a lot of property, but I never dive too too deep. Lah. So example of their property, right, is that uh one of the strategies that they differentiate is that they have a main uh, distribution center at Mandai, which is also their headquarters. So they actually own the land, they own the building, and that's where all the goods go. Then from the Mandai distribution center, they send it to all the different outlets in Sing Song. So they do own a lot of property. Some of the property, they, they outright purchase it. Some of the property, they rent it from HDB, like a five-year or 10-year lease. So actually, a lot of their asset uh, is actually property. Most of their asset is actually property. Whereas they buy the goods, right? They take it like a loan from the supplier. They sell already, then they pay back uh, the supplier. They leverage on the supplier. Yeah, but I never go into so much detail. Uh, but I don't want to overwhelm you all. Yeah. But 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 you do understand that, uh, wow, Jasper, yeah, Jasper Lim, wow, you do have a good understanding on Sing Song. Well done, well done. Yeah, Peter Lynch is more diversification. Uh, Philip Fisher is uh also growth investing. Philip Fisher last time he buy Motorola and made I think hundred times his money on Motorola. Then Motorola become uh dinosaur, common stock, uncommon profit. Yeah, Jesse Livermore is a gambler. 
uh, stock trader. Yeah. But Jesse Livermore is my idol also. Yeah. Baba boat already no need to work at uh, Sing Song. Yeah. In Baba Leaf Port, all hot lah. We no need to work at Sing Song already. Foreigner, especially Vietnamese. Ah. You all like uh, Vietnamese. Ah. Yeah, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. That, that book is very nice. Yeah. David Wong, Vietnamese girl, them rough. Ah. The boys. Ah. When they speak Vietnamese, it's, it's like that. Lah. Yeah. I believe, guys, we should make Discord channel. Suggest to ML. I did get a lot of suggestions. Like, Discord and Telegram group. But there's a lot of scam. Like. There's, like, you see like the Calvin investing. I got a lot of fake channel, fake account on him. So I don't want you all to get scammed. Yeah. So you all want to chat, just chat in the live stream. Yeah, just at night during the live stream, you all chat. Because uh, I worry that you all get scammed. So I don't want to do the Discord and the Telegram. I also don't have the time to manage also. Yeah, so sorry about it. Yeah. Ah, Nico, I like darker skin girls. You like the suntan, more sunny type one. Ah. Yeah. Taiwan girls very quiet. Lan. Don't don't play play got gang one. Wow. But but Taiwanese girl when they talk ah the, the voice very cute one. Wow, you all talk about uh girls ah. I skip I skip. Oh got serious question, then I answer synergy ah. synergy with the Kim Lee lah. Buy beside the coffee shop, then got uh synergy. Yeah, the uncle auntie they want the chen pay by pay. Lim C H S and P five hundred and Nasdaq will rebound one point one to two percent. Tonight after the few day losses, yeah, the fear subside already. Uh, no crash, no crash. Don't scare, don't scare. Huh? But even the U.S. market crash, I think that U.S. crash twenty percent, maybe China crash ten percent. The U.S. crash will be worse than the China crash, because China is already down, uh, so much already. Yeah, KO, KO Coca Cola, very defensive. Yeah, Mister Tokyo Me sell comfort buy Sing Song. Sing Song, Quan Yeah. Sing Song is very solid. I, I definitely I prefer Sing Song than Comfort Delgo. Comfort Delgo, if you buy, your, your bet is that you will privatize law. You hope that the Marseille GIC or, or will buy it. Grab is not gonna buy it. Grab buy the Transcap and the uh, Food Panda already. You hope that uh, maybe Tokyo PDA will buy the Grab. ML can analyze KO. Can I can organize KO if a lot of people want me to talk about Coca Cola? I'll talk about Coca Cola. In the end, like previously, you asked me to talk about PayPal and Disney. I also covered PayPal and Disney. So if a lot of people want me to cover, I I I, I will cover. Bao Chang, I need to cover. I need to call cover my Tiger Baba and SE. a more premium. Yeah, today audience hundred twenty. Nowadays is hundred plus one. Nowadays hundred is the new norm. If got hit two hundred, then let me know. Nowadays my live stream is hundred plus, yeah, yeah. Master slowly, slowly my live stream is picking up already. Nowadays too many people already. That's why the, the chat I, I I can if I read all uh, I think ten o'clock then finish uh. I cannot read all the chat already. Best word is the worst. Best word co-founder, co-chairman group or oh, net, chow point five million. Wow. Best word is scam uh, very shady uh. That's why they got suspended now. Best World can sell la. It's the MLM one la. It's very shady company, la. but surprisingly, Best World the price still so high. Uh, but I don't like MLM all this la. It's uh very dark side la. Hong Fook, yeah. That's why that's why a lot of the Singapore listed companies they pay themselves very high salary, and you cannot fire them if they don't perform well. Whereas you look at the Chinese tech, like JD, the the results very bad. They sack the CEO. Now it's a new CEO. Like Alibaba, Daniel Zhang, Gana Sek, and now it's the Joseph Tsai and Eddie Wu come in. So I like the Chinese culture, the China listed companies that if you cannot perform, they will sack the CEO and they'll get a new one. You know, Singapore market is family owned. You, you cannot sack the, 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 the family because they have all the shares. Yeah. Bao Chang, I in Baba, 82.5, SE, 35.5. Wow, very good price. Ah. Confirm you what what la. S E C sell call at low price. You sell S E at forty five ah. The call so low ah. I think S E easily can go to eighty or one hundred eh, by end of next year. Yeah, Baba can go to three hundred. Up to you la. But sell call you earn the premium upfront. Then you should sell the call your strike price at the price that you want to take profit. 
up to you lah. I I'm not an expert in in the core options lah. Yeah. Sun Chai ML getting popular. Thanks all for the support. Hope you all enjoy my sharing lah. Anyway, it's Friday already, so just go out and enjoy yourself, okay? So you all don't stress yourself. Oh, ba ba up four percent already. No more crash already. Don't scared. Don't scared. Oh, so okay. Yeah. So you all ask me right? Do do the poll. So I think maybe I'll do the poll next week. Never do do we do it today? Okay. Yeah. Tai Miao, IPO shares. What will you do? Ah, huh? will you keep? Or will you sell? So I just do a short poll lah. Oh, then before I call it a night. Yeah. So let me look at the U.S. market. U.S. futures up 0.5. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, uh, let me look at Baba and S.E. pre market. What is Friday already? Am I right? It's Friday, right? Yeah, it's Friday already. Happy weekend. So weekend don't look at stock market. Just and S.E. up 2.5 percent. Last night it was as it, it actually test the 35 dollar level. Yeah, last last night it it test the thirty five. Uh, la, la, last night it went to as low as thirty five point oh six. So thirty five is a strong support level. It bounced up from this support. So don't be scared. Thirty five is is the is the so called the super support lah. At thirty dollars, the, the the management can take it private. Why? At thirty dollars, right? The market cap will be about eighteen billion, and they have eight billion in cash. So the management they already hold like fifty percent of the company. Am I right? So they can make an offer for half the remaining shares. Half the remaining shares will cost them ten billion. They just borrow another two billion from bank. They plus the eight billion in their balance sheet. They can buy out the SE already. So SE cannot go below thirty dollars. If you understand what I'm saying, any price thirty or lower, the management get get a free deal to take SE private with the cash in the balance sheet. So SE cannot go below thirty dollars. So if you have conviction, now is the time to go all in. About to 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 buy SE. Please 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 don't go all in. SE SE should not be more than three to five percent of your portfolio lah. That's why SE. If I got extra money, I will buy aggressively lah. SE I can feel the bottom lah. Thirty thirty five confirm is the bottom. Baba up four percent pre market. Okay, solid solid. So don't worry. Ah, rebounding already. Okay. So, uh, China and IPO shares. What will you do? End the poll and call it. So, two third of your, uh, two third of your say will keep. One third will sell. Also, we see how it goes. Ah, next week, once the IPO, I get the prospectus. Then I, I, I read through it. I do a deep dive. Ah, China IPO one billion is the amount they want to raise. The valuation could be twenty to twenty five billion. So they want to sell like five to ten percent of their shares. If they sell ten percent of their shares, they will be raising about two or two point five billion. One billion is the minimum they will they will want to raise. Most likely they want to raise two or two point five billion. Ah, that's that's my thinking. Ah, why Baba forced the IPO? Depends. Ah, if I think they were try now they can IPO at a high valuation. Yeah. So enjoy your shopping. SE really cheap. Ah. I between Baba and SE, I think now SE is a more attractive buy, cause SE and I tell you the downside is limited. Anything thirty or less, the management can take it private for free. Yeah, so if it goes below thirty, they take it private. Then they offer you thirty, thirty five, forty dollar. You still make money, mah. So it's it's very hard to lose money on SE, uh, buying at thirty five dollar level. That's that's my thinking. Yeah, so take care all, enjoy your weekend. Bye bye. Good night.